call a meeting to order. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. The town clerk has informed me that the warrant has been properly served and posted and that a quorum is present. Preliminary matters, uh, I place in denomination Peter Levitt as deputy moderator and ask that the meeting vote is one uh, to endorse this nomination. All those in favor of Peter Levitt as deputy moderator signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. So voted and declared unanimous. Uh, for clerks tonight, we have John Manning, Nick Waterman, Rich Travers, Heather Santosuozo, Susan Frankel, George Kelly, Lisa Thompson, uh, Mary Sinito, uh, Chris Meraki, and Frank Snow. Would the deputy moderator and tellers uh, please rise for the oath? Would you raise your right hand, please? Do you solemnly swear to uphold the responsibilities of the position you hold here this evening? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We have a few basic rules for the meeting. Uh, first, if you wish to address the meeting, please approach a microphone, and when you've been recognized, give your name and address. Uh, if you are unable to speak from a microphone, please hold your hand up. Uh, we have a runner who will bring a microphone to you. Uh, the reason that we ask you to identify you, yourself by name and address is for posterity. Those who may uh, want to listen to the tape in future years uh, will not know who you are unless you identify yourself. Uh, secondly, if uh, you have had enough debate, if you feel like you are ready to vote, you may move the question. Uh, moving the question is a motion to terminate debate. You must make a motion uh, to move the question at the beginning of your presentation, not after you speak. It would otherwise be unfair for you to give a speech and then say, I move the question. So no mouse trapping allowed. Uh, third, when you speak, kindly address your comments and questions through the moderator. Uh, this is not a debate. It's a parliamentary body. Uh, so questions to the moderator or through the moderator to any of the officials or anyone else. Uh, please also bear in mind that if you ask a question of an official, they need not answer. I cannot compel an official to answer. You may, however, draw any inference that you deem appropriate from someone's failure to answer your question. The rules of the meeting uh, are set out in town meeting time, the parliamentary guide for town meetings. Uh, they are also determined by the town's bylaws and by the moderator's authority conferred by Chapter 39, Section 15. It is a rule of the moderator that speakers speaking for the first time may speak for five minutes and when they rise to speak on the same matter for a second time, uh, they will be limited to three minutes. That is my rule in the absence of a bylaw to that effect. Uh, please be advised that the town has voted to allow the moderator to declare two-thirds vote. Uh, should you disagree with the moderator's determination that a two-thirds vote has been achieved, seven voters may stand and challenge my determination. Uh, with those procedural uh, matters out of the way, why don't we proceed to the warrant? Uh, Article 1, um, from the Board of Selectmen, Chairman Danahy. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Article 1, to see if the town will vote to transfer from available funds in the Treasury the sum of $481, or a greater or lesser sum, for the purpose of paying a fiscal year 2010 unpaid bill or take any other action relative thereto. Is there a second? Seconded, Mr. Vignani. Discussion, Chairman Danny. Um, this is an unpaid bill from fiscal year 2010. It's in relation to a, um, uh, the, the last special um, election that we had in April. 
strike that actually may. And so we, in order to close out the fiscal year 2010, need to authorize the payment for that. And that will be coming from free cash. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to accept the reference to free cash as a friendly amendment. Uh, Mr. Vignani is seconding the friendly amendment. Uh, if, go ahead. Sure. If I may interject, uh, Mr. Moderator, I'd like to amend my motion because actually I read you the article, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I actually need to read the motion. So I'd like to amend that by saying, I move that the town transfer from free cash the sum of $481 for the purpose of paying a fiscal year 2010 unpaid bill for the publication of the May 17, 2010 special town meeting warrant from free cash uh, to the selectman's expense in the amount of $481. Okay, Mr. Vignani seconds. Uh, the the ex explanation is still the same. Uh, questions from the floor, there being none. Mr. DiLorenzo from the Advisory Committee. Good evening, and the bill referenced uh, by John did, was not received by the town until, uh, until September of this year. Uh, the advisory committee recommends approval of this motion. All right. There being no one at the mics, this requires a nine-tenths vote for approval. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, so voted and declared unanimous. Article 2, Chairman Danny. Thank you again. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer from free cash the sum of 2000 I'm sorry, $274,680 for the purpose of balancing the fiscal year 2011 budget pursuant to Article 5 of the April 12, 2010 Annual Town Meeting Warrant. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Vignani. Uh, Mr. Chairman, for the explanation. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as a result of, again, some shortfalls in local aid, also in property taxes, and um, new growth estimates, uh, this fiscal budget is short by approximately $275,000. Accordingly, we need to adjust for that for this fiscal year, and we're gonna be looking to take the money from free cash in order to balance this year's budget. The Chairman of the Advisory Committee, Mr. DiLorenzo. Uh, the composition of the shortfall is noted in your Advisory Committee report. Um, just two notes, um, over half of the shortfall of local receipts was driven by um, less than expected earnings on town investments. Um, secondarily, the other point is that should you approve this motion, uh, the remaining balance in free cash will be $600,000. The advisory committee recommends approval of this motion. Further discussion, this requires a majority vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, so voted and declared unanimous. Article three, Chairman Denny. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that the town transfer the sum of $1,238 from the Board of Health Personal Services to Shellfish Warden Personnel Services for the purpose of fully funding this account for the fiscal year 2011 from Board of Health Personal Services to Shellfish Warden Personnel Services in the amount of $1,238. Is there a second? It's second, Mr. Vignani. Uh, Mr. Danny. Again, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, folks, in our zeal in trying to cut the budget, we ended up cutting a little too much from the shellfish warden stipend. Accordingly, we need to put that money back in for this fiscal year, and obviously it's, it's a little more than $1,200. This also will be coming from, um, from free cash. Uh, strike that. From personal services from the Board of Health. Chairman of the Advisory Committee, Mr. DiLorenzo. Uh, the Advisory Committee recommends approval of this motion. All right. Uh, discussion from the floor. There being none, this requires a majority vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, so voted and declared unanimous. Article 4 from the Board of Selectmen, uh, Chairman Danahy. Thank you again. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer $10,000 from available funds in the legal expense litigation account and $6,100 from available funds in conservation personnel services into the conservation purchase of services for the purpose of fully funding this account for fiscal year 2011. This will be coming from the legal expense litigation to conservation purchase of services in the amount of $10,000 
and conservation personal services to conservation uh, purchase of services in the amount of $6,100. Seconded, Mr. Vignani. Uh, Mr. Danny. Again, folks, uh, the amount that we're looking at is to transfer uh, $10,000 for legal expenses um, that have been due to litigation. The other amount, $6,100, is for uh, settlement purposes um, to pay the former uh, conservation agent. From the Advisory Committee, Chairman DeLorenzo. In addition to the funds required to pay um, the retiring conservation agent, this funds the cost of having an interim person in the position. The Advisory Committee recommends approval of this motion. Discussion from the floor. There being none, this requires a majority vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed, so voted and declared unanimous. Article 5 from Board of Selectmen, Chairman Danny. Again, I move that the uh, town uh, <clears throat> transfer $50,000 from available funds in the general liability count to the school department budget pursuant to Article 5 of the April 4th, I'm sorry, April 12th, 2010 annual town meeting warrant. Again, this is coming from general liability account to the school department in the amount of $50,000. Seconded, Mr. Norton. Uh, discussion, Mr. Danny. Um, folks, as you can, if you don't have your advisory report, which I encourage you to grab in the back of the auditorium, it explains, in essence, um, when we had budgeted for the general liability account, uh, the amount that we actually, um, after sending it out for proposals, came in less than what we budgeted for. And we're looking to take and allocate $50,000 in this article to the schools, um, pursuant to a two-thirds, one-third. The amount that we saved was $75,000. Um, and so 50 of that we're looking to allocate towards the school department. From the advisory committee, Mr. Sandin. The advisory committee recommends uh, approval of the article as stated. Discussion from the floor. There being none, this requires a majority vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, so voted and declared unanimous. Article 6, Board of Selectmen, Mr. Danahy. Again, thank you. I move that the town transfer $25,000 available funds in the general liability account and $10,000 from free cash for the purpose of funding increased costs in contract bargaining and other services. This is going um, from the general liability insurance to the contract bargaining other uh, services in the amount of $25,000 free, and from free cash, contract bargaining, other services in the amount of $10,000. Is there a second? Seconded, Mr. Vignani. Discussion, Chairman Danny. As I had mentioned in the prior article with the schools, $25,000 that we had saved from um, over budgeting, if you will, that came in earlier, uh, we're looking to utilize through uh, contract negotiations and bargaining. In addition to that, we need and seek another $10,000 pursuant to that um, through the negotiations that we've been able to undertake with um, some of the unions in the town. From the Advisory Committee, Mr. Sandin. Uh, likewise, the Advisory Committee recommends approval of the motion. Discussion from the floor. There being none, this requires a majority vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, so voted and declared unanimous. Article 7, Chairman Danning. Thank you again. Um, would it be appropriate, Mr. Moderator, if I could ask to see if we could have a consolidated um, on these next articles, 7 through 11, and what I'd be asking is a consent agenda. Um, there's some um, 10, sorry, 7 through 10. A consent agenda whereby I would read the articles, Mr. Moderator, and then if anybody opposed that they could say hold, and then we could go through each one. This way we can expedite these next articles. I'm all in favor of expediting. Uh, members of the meeting, uh, consent agenda is a way to speed things up on routine articles. Um, I think it's a wise idea, but you know, perhaps it's a dull night on television. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read the motions that the selectmen present on each of these articles. I'll, read, I'll give you the name of the article, I'll read the motion. If you want a particular article held for discussion, just call out hold in a loud voice and we'll hold it, we'll return to it. Anything that isn't held will be voted as one. Okay, on Article 7, 
Uh, the chairman's motion is I move that the town transfer $73,636 from golf retained earnings and the golf enterprise fund for the purpose of balancing the fiscal year 2011 budget pursuant to Article 7 of the April 12, 2010 annual town meeting warrant. Do I hear a hold? No hold. Article 8. Chairman Danny, he moves that the town transfer $42,259 from the transfer station retained earnings in the golf course enterprise fund for the purpose of balancing the fiscal year 2011 budget pursuant to Article 9 of the April 12, 2010 annual town meeting warrant. Is there a hold? No hold. Article 9, Chairman Danny, he moves that the town transfer $107,315 from sewer retained earnings in the sewer enterprise fund for the purpose of balancing the fiscal year 2011 budget pursuant to Article 8 of the April 12, 2010 annual town meeting. Is there a hold? Article 10, no hold. Um, Chairman Danny, he moves that the town uh, take $219,732 from the water retained earnings in the Water Enterprise Fund for the purpose of balancing the fiscal year 2011 budget pursuant to Article 10 the April 12, 2010 annual town meeting warrant. Is there a hold? There's no hold. Hmm? No? Okay. Uh, Mr. Vignani seconds all of those motions. Uh, Chairman Danahy on the explanation. Yes. Folks, these are enterprise funds, funds that um, are, shall we say, um, um, self-sufficient. You pay as you go for your use. Um, as a result of the budgeting for this year, um, we are seeking to use the enterprise funds uh, to balance each of those budgets. And so accordingly, in order to make them balanced, we need to transfer with, from each of those respective funds um, to balance the budget. From the advisory committee, Mr. Hyman. Advisory committee uh, unanimously recommends approval on the, of the motion on these four articles. Discussion from the floor. There being none, this requires a majority vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? So voted and declared unanimously passed for Article 7 through 10. Article 11, from the Board of Selectmen, Chairman Danny. Again, thank you. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer from free cash $10,000 and $15,000 from DPW Engineering Personal Services and $3,300 from Waterways Retained Earnings in the Waterways Enterprise Fund, and 100, I'm sorry, $1,400 from the Golf Retained Earnings in the Golf Enterprise Fund, totaling $29,700. For the purpose of paying for fiscal year 2011 contractual obligations for professional employees, with set amount to be allocated accordingly by the town accountant into the appropriate personal services. Is there a second? Second to Mr. Harris. Discussion, Chairman Danny. Thank you. Um, again, in order to pay for the personal services for the employees who work through these enterprise funds, um, the pay-as-you-go, like the golf course or the water department or the sewer department, uh, we're taking money from those enterprise funds in order to pay personal services for the certain individuals who, are, uh, who work for them. And that's why we're seeking these amount of monies to pay for their salaries. From the advisory committee, Mr. Dolan. The advisory committee re recommends approval of the motion. Discussion. There being no one rising to speak, this requires a majority vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, so voted and declared unanimous. Article 12, Chairman Danny. Thank you. Moving along, I move that the town transfer from free cash $15,000 for the purpose of funding personal services in the Information Technology Department. Again, it's coming from free cash to the IT personal services in the amount of $15,000. Seconded, Mr. Norton. Discussion, Chairman Danny. Folks, we're looking to set up basically an IT position for the town for a uh, town that has over $60 million operating budget, both on the town and the school side, uh, we as a town are basically setting up an IT person to deal with the computer issues. Uh, and what we're looking for is $15,000 in order for starting January 1st to have a person with those capabilities to be hired, 
to help network and to be able to make us much more efficient. And so we're looking for $15,000 in order to fund this position. From the advisory committee, Mr. Dolan. But, uh, on both this position and the department was approved in the uh, April 2010 town meeting, the advisory committee recommends approval of the motion. Discussion. There being none, this requires a majority vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, so voted and declared unanimous. Article 13, Chairman Denny. Thank you. I move that the town transfer from free cash $14,000 for the purpose of paying increased costs in this year's fiscal year 2011 overtime in the fire department. The money will be coming from free cash to the fire department personal services, again in the amount of $14,000. Is there a second? Seconded Mr. Harris. Discussion, Chairman Denny. Thank you. Um, due to the overtime for the fire department for just this fiscal year, we're seeking $14,000 in order to make that item balance. Um, our projections were off. Um, obviously, there have been some situations where people needed to work overtime, which we did not estimate or anticipate. But now, looking at it from this year, we realize we will need that amount of money in order to make our fire department budget balance. And so we're seeking $14,000 to ensure that by the end of this fiscal year, it will be balanced. Thank you. From the Advisory Committee, Mr. Dolan. The Advisory Committee recommends this motion. Discussion. There being none, this requires a majority vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed, so voted and declared unanimous. Article 14, Chairman Danahy. Thank you again. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town authorize the Library Board of Trustees on behalf of the Board of Selectmen to apply for, accept, and or expand any state fund, expend any state funds or grants which may be available to defray all or part of the cost of design, construction, and equipping the library building renovation project and to authorize the library trustees on behalf of the Board of Selectmen to accept and expend any such funds that may be received without further appropriation. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Harris. Discussion, Chairman Danny. Thank you. Uh, we're looking to do a feasibility study on the library to upgrade it. The building needs desperate improvements, and at this point, we're also seeking to have the library trustees to seek if there's any a possibility to um, obtaining any type of grants that can help the town further increase it. So we're asking um, for um, authorization to be able to do that. From the advisory committee, Mr. Sandin. Take it. Get the wrong person. No. Oh. My apologies. The advisory committee recommends unanimous approval of this motion. Discussion. There being none, this requires a majority vote. Oh, Mr. Kelly, I'm sorry. Sir, could you identify yourself? George can't hear you. Well, that isn't my fault. <coughs> no, I'm sorry. George P. Kelly, 450 Country Way in Situate. Mr. Kelly. Re regarding the original plans of the library, which happened to be very lucky for this town that they had the plans and money became available from the federal government. And the issue is are those plans still around? Was there any discussion at that time for the library be, to be larger or any way of showing an addition? And it would be silly to spend $45,000 when they're filed in the drawers of the archives. So please do not spend $45,000 until we know if we've got a set of plans that show expansion possibilities. Thank you. Further discussion? There being none, this requires a majority vote. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed? Uh, so voted and declared passed by a majority. I'd like to uh, just take a, a break from the excitement and recognize our state representative, Jim Cantwell, who has joined us uh, sitting over in the visitor's section. Jim, stand up and say hello, please.
Thanks for coming. Article 15, Chairman Danny. Again. Thank you. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town transfer from free cash $52,665 for the purpose of conducting an investment grade audit in the town municipal and school facilities. Is there a second? Second to Mr. Harris. Discussion, Chairman Danahy. Thank you. Um, Board of Selectmen are looking to do literally an audit of all the buildings in the town in order to upgrade them from an environmental standpoint in order to have energy savings. In order to do that, we need to put aside this amount of money um, whereby if we end up enter, entering into upgrading our buildings, whether it's replacing the lights, fixing the windows, putting in the furnace, putting new roofs on, uh, that an amount of money of $52,000 will be coming back to us as well as cost savings. The town would like to undertake that because a lot of these buildings have served their useful life and certainly need to become much more energy uh, efficient. So we're seeking to have this money set aside in order to undertake the audit, to undertake a review of the buildings, and to hopefully improve them in one way or another. From the advisory committee, and I owe Mr. Judge uh, an apology for flubbing it on the last article, uh, Mr. Judge. Sorry. The advisory committee unanimously recommends approval of this motion. Discussion. Gentleman to my left. Joe Armstrong, 31 Pegney Beach Road. Again, this is a lot of money for a study. I just would like an assurance that at least three competitive bids from energy services companies have been solicited before this number was arrived at. There are a lot of companies in this business now. and In fact, I contract these in some cases for buildings for a living, and this seems like a big number, uh, especially since gas and electric companies are providing a lot of these studies for free. That's this, uh, has that been, has an inquiry been made to the electric company to see if such a survey could be done of our buildings for free? Anyone on the question? The town administrator. Um, that's an excellent question. Um, the number that we arrived at at this cost is um, based on a number of communities in the area, Marshfield, Dedham being two, and that was the price point that their bids came in at. We anticipate issuing our RFP, we haven't done it yet, um, next month. Your question about the electric companies and other utility companies doing the study is for this particular ESCO project, what will happen is we will issue the RFP and it will be put to competitive bid. And then if we fail to go forward with the recommendations, we have to pay the 52000 if we implement those, then the 52000 comes off the top and we never spend it. But in order to award a contract, we have to show that that 52000 has been set aside. There are a number of energy efficiency programs out there, like you mentioned, and we've been courted by several. But the way the state statute, and there's a particular state statute for ESCO in the general laws, this is the procedure that's outlined for it. Thank you. Further discussion? There being none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, so voted and declared unanimous. Article 16, the, see the chairman rests. Uh, Mr. Vignan. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that the town authorize the Board of Selectmen to lease a portion of the situate transfer station landfill property for a period of up to 25 years for the purpose of constructing and operating a solar array on top of the town's capped landfill, and to establish such terms for said lease as the board determines to be in the best interest of the town. Is there a second? Second to Mr. Harris. Discussion, Mr. Vignan. Uh, this is basically uh, the town authorizing the, the board, if we see fit, to have a company come in here and put a solar array on top of the landfill. A couple of weeks ago at our Board of Selectmen meeting, we had Ty and Bond come in and tell us about the property. Um, there's about 15 acres of land up there and what the alternative uses for that property would be. There's been a lot of discussion over the years about um, ball fields and all sorts of different uses for that property. Um, to our surprise, the, pro the property is still not really in a use where we can um, do any of the things that we've discussed in the past per Ty and Bond. So at this point, we're, this does not actually seal the deal of us doing this, but it gives us the opportunity to do it if we choose to do it in the future, and that is putting the array up there. If we do put the array up there, it will save us about $150,000 in electrical bills a year. Um, and the Board of Selectmen vote unanimously in support of this motion. 
from the Advisory Committee, Mr. Sandin. The Advisory Committee re recommends uh, approval of this motion. Discussion from the floor. Gentleman to my right. Scott Greenbaum, 40 Damon Road. Sir. Um, for a little background, uh, I have negotiated for the town of West uh, Stockbridge their power purchase agreement. Um, I would like to know a little bit more facts about the nine proposals that you have. Uh, price of electricity, acceleration, termination um, things, because you're uh, talking about a 25-year contract, which is extremely unusual for a contract of this type. Most of them are 15 to 20. So if any facts that you can give us about the uh, proposals would be helpful because you are, there are a lot of risks that are involved and there's, you know, there's a need to know what we're tying up 25 years for. I support the idea, just want to make sure that we're getting a good deal. On the question, Mr. Vignette. Yeah, and, and I'll defer to Al or, or maybe someone from the Energy Commission if it doesn't answer correctly, but um, this is really just the town authorizing us to lease the property. There has been no, um, nothing awarded. The RFP, I believe, has gone out. We've got some information on it. All that stuff will be discussed at the Board of Selectmen's meeting where that's probably going to be where we go into the nitty-gritty of the contract. Um, I think, Al, I don't know if you have anything else to add to that, but, but this is really just getting us posed so that if we feel that this is the appropriate thing to do for the town, we don't have to wait another year to go to any town meeting to get approval to do this. Did you have a follow-up question? The, I mean, apparently in the paper they said there are nine proposals, so we should be able to know the general ranges of those proposals at this point, and if we're going to be looking at making a 25-year commitment within the next uh, foreseeable future, I assume before the next town meeting. Gentleman to my left. Uh, Paul Reedy, 41 Strawberry Lane. I'm uh, the chairman of the Renewable Energy Committee. Um, we have been meeting for the last number of months. Uh, you are correct, we had nine RFPs come in. Uh, we have had numerous meetings. We have interviewed seven of the nine. Uh, and what we have been doing is uh, putting together, you know, the best copious notes we could possibly put together to present to the Board of Selectmen with our recommendation going forward and then from there it will be up to the Board of Selectmen with, which, with, with whom which company they go with. But I can tell you that we've probably spent, uh, trying to think of the number of meetings because I get confused between that and the turbine. There had to have been at least uh, six meetings anyway and seven of the companies have come forward and through each one of the discussions we're learning more and more and more. And I think when we finally detail uh, the outcome of all our meetings and the selection of the opportunity and we present what we think is the best deal for the town, uh, it'll be their decision, of course. But I think that we will have done a good job with the backup. And again, it is a later date position that you'll be hearing. The other thing that I would uh, add is we are extremely fortunate in town to have uh, a local attorney with Wilmer and Hale, uh, Mark um, Kalpin, who has been fantastic uh, assisting us as a resident uh, negotiating throughout that process and we actually utilized his services uh, to do the PPA for the wind turbine. So we think we have our T's crossed and our I's dotted. The final final is going to be going to the selectmen in the next, uh, I would think the next few weeks and then from there uh, we'll make a recommendation and let them go from there. Gentlemen to my right. Okay. Is there any other discussion? There being none, this requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, so voted and declared unanimous. Article 17, Mr. Harris. I move that the town amend the town of Situates zoning bylaws by amending section 200, definitions in section 400, Paragraph 420, Table of Use rec Regulations, and by adding a new section 480, Ground-Mounted Solar Vitalic Installations. And uh, Green Communities Ground-Mounted oh, Solar. Yeah, um, all right, Green Communities Ground-Mounted Solar Vitalic Installations Bylaw, 
as fully set out in the warrant and provided to all members for the purpose of this meeting. Thanks, Mr. Harris. Is there a second? Second, to Mr. Vignani. Discussion, Mr. Harris. This general bylaw allows the town to situate the flexibility to encourage developers in the commercial district to use photovoltaic technology. Bylaw sets out the regulations and criteria to accomplish this and helps advance green projects in the town. Uh, from the advisory committee, Ms. Curran. The advisory committee uh, unanimously supported this motion. Discussion ah, from the planning board, Mr. Limbacher with the planning board report. Yeah, the planning board is required to make a report, and it goes as follows. The planning board hereby reports that in accordance with Mass General Laws Chapter 40A, public hearing was held on this article on no October 14, 2010, at which time the public hearing was closed and the board voted unanimously to support passage of Article 17 at the November 8th special town meeting. The planning board supports this article because it will encourage use of sustainable sources of energy while providing new economic opportunities in the commercial zoning district. In addition, as op adoption of this zoning is a requirement for Situate to become a green community, which will allow the town to access funds and make our buildings more energy efficient. A copy of this report has been given to the town clerk. Further discussion? Gentleman to my left. Uh, Michael Hayes, 50 Beaver Dam Road. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I had a question on this. Um, at the beginning, where it is amending the definition section of the bylaw, it uh, defines as of right citing, but I did not see as of right citing in the actual new bylaw. So my question is uh, whether that as of right citing definition uh, relates to this article in the, in the so, uh, ground mounted uh, solar uh, facilities or was that an attempt, or is that is the intent of that just to add that to the definitions in general? To answer the question, Mr. Limbach. The answer to the question is the general. Gentlemen to my left. And I'd like to just follow up on that, that if it was in the general, I think it would have been clear at a town meeting if this was a separate article. Further discussion? There being none, this requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, so voted and declared unanimous. Article 18, the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Norton. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town amend the general bylaws of the town by inserting a new section 30355 entitled Stretch Energy Code is set forth in the wire and provided to all members for this meeting, which says sections to take effect July 1st, 2011. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Harris. Discussion. Mr. Moderator, the passage of this article would, would help to make the town more energy efficient and also is allowed to apply for, for uh, grants, newly uh, sent grants that would be available from the state. Thank you. From the advisory committee, and I neglected to recognize her on the previous article. Was that right? Did I? Oh, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> slipping up. Uh, Ms. Curran. Um, the advisory board unanimously supports the uh, passage of this motion. Does the bylaw review committee have uh, a comment that it would like to make? No? Okay. Um, gentleman at the center mic. Norman Paley, 50 Eli Avenue. Sir. Uh, while I don't object to this article because it deals with new construction, and making new construction more energy efficient. It is definitely the camel's nose under the tent. Just like Title I was a good, started out as a good idea and then became uh, mandatory, though, so you could not sell your house without meeting Title I, that this code also 
Uh, I have seen many, many articles talking about the fact that eventually you may not be able to sell your house unless you meet certain energy requirements. And even though the state and federal government might give you monetary incentives to do that, still it would be a tremendous expense for people to have to upgrade their house to certain energy requirements before they sell it. That is not in this bill, but I assure you it's coming. The town administrator has handed me a report dated October 25th from Greg E. Harris, Chairman, Bylaw Review Commission. Uh, at a duly called and held meeting on October 13, 2010, the Bylaw Review Commission unanimously voted to approve warrant articles 17, 18, 19, and 19 of the special town meeting be held on November 8, 2010. I've also had handed to me a, a note uh, which says that uh, I'd, I neglected to call for a vote on Article 15, and I've consulted with the town clerk uh, who tells me that even though I don't remember it, uh, her records show that I called the vote and that it was a unanimous vote. So, but thank you, because I do make mistakes. Uh, further discussion. There being none, this requires a majority vote on Article 18. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? So voted and declared a majority. Article 19, Mr. Harris. I move that the town amend general bylaws of the town, part two, organization, 20100 town meetings, section 20140, by inserting the words, or any other day that is in the best interest of the business of the town. After the words, the selectmen may, in their discretion, call a special town meeting to be held on any Monday. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Vignani. Discussion, Mr. Harris. This just gives the Board of Selectmen some flexibility in moving the special town meeting to any other night other than Monday, and it's just for the special. From the Advisory Committee, Ms. Curran. Um, for those of you that don't have a booklet in your hands, uh, the advisory comments are as follows. The town's general bylaws require that special town meetings be scheduled on a Monday. For fall town meetings, this is proven to be particularly difficult, especially in view of primary and state elections. This article would simply allow the board at its discretion to set a special town meeting date other than on a Monday if future calendars prove to be challenging for scheduling um, the meeting. The advisory recommends approval of this article and the passage of this motion. Discussion. There being none, this requires a majority vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. All those opposed, so voted and declared unanimous. All right, well, we rush through things. Well, not rush through. I mean, we, we, we take care of business speedily on the easier things so we can leave lots of room for the big ones. So, I, I, while I won't editorialize, I, I think here we are. Uh, Article 20, Mr. Paley. Move to revoke sections three to seven inclusive of chapter 44B of the general laws of the Community Preservation Fund as voted by the town of Situan. And a summary of uh, that appears below. Is there a second? It's been moved and seconded. Discussion, Mr. Paley. This is not a vendetta against the Community Preservation Fund. We all know that the Community Preservation Fund has done many great things for the town of Situate. But in a time of economic strife that we're in right now, we have to look at where we can put our money. If we revoke the Community Preservation Fund, we would put $1 million back into the hands of the voters of the town of Situate. That $1 million would go a long way to what, as far as everybody I have talked to, both on the school side and the town side, feel that 
there is no way that we're going to get through 2012, FY 2012, without an override. If we said, okay, let's keep the community preservation fund and let's dig back into our pockets and fund that override, then we have to stop and look at all of the people in the town to see where they are economically. And we have seen that housing right now, the value of our housing has decreased by an average of about $100,000. We have the highest unemployment rate in the town that we ever had. We have had defaults, people losing their houses to the banks, higher than we have ever had in the town, and it's not going to get better. For those who think that we live in a bubble and that what goes around us from the federal and from the state doesn't matter and that we will just always have money coming to the town of Situate is totally mistaken. On the federal level, we're $13 trillion in debt and the Chinese government is not particularly willing to keep funding our debt. There will be no gobs of money coming in. In fact, the, the great amount of money that was supposed to go for projects to stir the economy got changed from shovel-ready projects to shovel budgets. And it went to, to in the case of Massachusetts, to the governor so he could prop his budgets up. There are no shovel-ready projects out there. We have nothing to show it but eaten up budgetary expenditures to keep the government going. Right now, the state is $30 billion in debt, and for next year, we're looking at a $2.5 billion deficit. And we saw how we're going, we've moved money around this year to keep the town going, the state has got to come up with two and a half billion dollars to see if they can somehow do it. And they can't just override two and a half to do it. They've got to raise our taxes up to pay for it. So we looked and to see where we could find that money and we said, okay, if we put that million dollars back into the hands of the voters, we can fund next year's deficit without going back into our pockets again. We can, at some later time, vote it back in. Now, when we vote on operational override, it's there forever. And if we vote the Community Preservation Act in two, three, four years, however long it's going to take to get out of this budgetary cycle, then we have to keep it for five years. So you end up with the best of both worlds. You have that extra million dollars coming in forever, plus you vote the Community Preservation Act back in at a time when we can afford to do it and afford to spend that money. This is not the time. This is the time where we have to look to see where we can get funds and keep those funds running the town of Situate. Sir, um, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, discussion? Anyone from the board of selection? Chairman Danny. Um, the board of selectmen voted unanimously, four to zero, to oppose this article. From the advisory committee, Chairman DiLorenzo. The advisory committee also uh, voted unanimously to not support this article. And basically, there were two reasons. Um, if, you, if you look in your handbook, you'll see a reference that even though the state contribution to these funds has declined, uh, given the state of the economy, uh, situate on an investment of $6.7 million since the fund was enacted, has received state matching funds of $5 million. 
wherever you're putting money, even at today's rate that the state's reimbursing, which is between 30 and 40 percent, to earn 30 and 40 percent for this town is a tremendous investment and probably, it's a tremendous return and probably one that we would all uh, like to have personally. Um, we'd hate to see that go away, which is what happens if you revoke uh, the act. Um, secondly, uh, I think we do agree with Norm that these are very, very challenging times economically, uh, but it also, for communities like Situate, provides an opportunity. Um, should there be land that comes available um, as people want to um, cash out of their holdings or whether it's property, um, land that could be potentially used to help find different sources of water, uh, property that could be used potentially for affordable housing, um, it's the community preservation funds that allow us to buy those opportunities for the town. Revoking this act uh, limits our ability to buy to the fund balance that remains. If we stay in the game, if we continue to be a community that supports the act, we can borrow against the money that comes out of our tax levy every year towards the CPC. Um, we all recognize the difficulty that the town is going through, both on the town side and the school side. Um, but we believe that revoking this act would be short-sighted, and we voted unanimously to not support this motion. For the CPC, Mr. Bowman. Good evening. Um, my name is John Bullman. I'm from 72 Old Forge Road. I'm also the chairman of the Community Pres Preservation Committee. I've been involved with the Community Preservation Committee for about five years. Um, prior to that, probably like a lot of you, I didn't know what it was, didn't know what it did. Um, I don't think anybody that knows me will think that I'm a naturalist or even a big historical buff, but I am someone that cares about the town of Situate that I, I grew up in for a large part of my life and that I care about and that I want my children to grow up in. Um, a little bit about what the Community Pre Preservation Act is and what it has done, and, and hopefully a lot of you have seen the literature back and forth on both sides, so I, I won't belabor it. Historical, um, one of our endeavors is to preserve and protect our historical resources. Um, recently at town meeting you voted to help us acquire the Bates House We've restored the Lawson Tower, the Grist Mill, um, Cudworth House, the Red School House. And when I say we've restored, that's with a huge commitment from the Situate Historical Society and Commission, the Historical Society putting 20% of its own money into every project to even leverage CPA funds further. Um, recreationally, you know, the new town marina on First Cliff, most of the site work was paid for with your CPA funds. Um, the outdoor basketball courts at the high school, the driftway and North Situate paths, the Hadley and Cushing playgrounds, um, and the Gates tennis courts. Th those are only examples. There are, there are more. We've acquired 250 plus acres of open space. It protects your water resources. There's a call pipes walking trail. And we're even at the last town meeting you voted another 57 acres that in addition to buying it with CPA funds that are, you know, largely state matched. We were just notified that we received a $500,000 grant and additional matching funds to make that property acquisition. So we're basically going to buy a million dollars worth of land with about 20 or 30 cents, 20 or 30 cents on the dollar of your money. Uh, a, a pretty good investment, and, and that $500,000 in grant money wouldn't be possible without CPA funds to provide the basis for that grant. We've also um, basically allowed the town to create an affordable housing trust that's been totally and solely funded by CPA. It's making baby steps towards creating affordable housing so the people that have grown up in this town can stay and afford to live in this town. Um, and, and it's allowed to give a tremendous amount of preference to situate residents in the, in the affordable housing it creates. And, and I think over time, the number of units will drastically increase. So basically, that is what community pre preservation is. Even if you don't use that particular bike trap, Path, or you haven't walked on that trail, or you don't visit, you know, that particular artifact, all those things collectively make up what situ it is. I mean, we've improved the harbor and the waterfront. We've, we've preserved all our historical resources. That's the nature and the character of the town I've grown up in. 
and CPA and community preservation is preserving that nature. So even if you don't use those particular items, the fact that you live here and your property is here, you benefit from the totality of that. That, that makes Situate a great place to live for our children to grow up and just to protect our investment in our real estate. CPA also gives landowners a tremendous opportunity. It, it allows them to, instead of, if they can't afford to donate property to the town, we can pay them some money so they don't have to sell it to a developer. They can sell it to us at a reduced rate. Mrs. Toomey just did that with the Bates House. She's going to sell it to us for 350000 when it's worth well over five hundred, so it won't be knocked down and become some mega mansion on the harbor. Um, you, you, you've heard the returns on, on the CPA funds. You know, even with the decline in the state match, there's a bill that's going to hopefully increase that match to a guaranteed 75%. And the recent grant that we received brought this year's CPA up to an 80% level of state matching funds again. Um, just some other considerations. Uh, CPA is not that easy to revoke and readopt, and it has nothing to do with uh, you know, whether there should be an override for schools or not. I have children in the schools, I support the schools, and if an override has merit, uh, I'll vote on it on its merits. Uh, I believe. It, CPA, we can afford both. And for those of us who can't, there are exemptions. I encourage you to see the assessor apply for exemptions. They're for, you know, value your property and, and lower income. You can be exempt from CPA. So I don't think it's an either or choice, even though these are difficult times. I think these resources, our water supply, our, the character of our town are important for us and for our children. And, and I vote, I personally, I, I will vote no and I encourage you to vote no. It's too important, it's not a luxury, and it's something we need more than ever. Thank you. From the Planning Board, Dr. Nico. Dr. Nico Fonsenko, 303 Chief Justice Cushing Highway. Uh, I've served on the planning board with the planning board here in, in full support tonight against Article 20. I'd like to read a short memo that we've written. We, the planning board, are in unanimous consent against Article 20, which intends to revoke the Community Preservation Act, CPA. As a board that is elected purely by our residents and as the acting body with the charge of examining long-range planning for the town's future welfare and implementing the approved master plan, we strongly urge each resident to vote no on Article 20. Limiting CPA funding for the town will not only impair our ability to provide services and infrastructure upgrades to our residents, but will also erase an enormous windfall in the form of funds from state and federal matching and grant programs, decrease our ability to bond for future expenses like school and infrastructure repairs and investments, and handcuff the town's ability to provide amenities for our children, our residents, and our businesses. Eliminating CPA funds will not fix the school budget and will not fill the long-term gap in educational funding for, that our children are facing. We do need to work hard for that solution, but this is not it. In this time when the economy is such a concern for each of us, the Board is of the unanimous opinion that decreasing or eliminating CPA would eliminate a virtually unique opportunity to leverage the town's financial resources and, among other negative results, would severely reduce the potential we have to build our business community and improve our revenue structure by making the character of this town better. Ultimately, this type of limitation stifles the chances we have to improve and increase our business tax base, which will help the economy of this town, and decrease the burden on individual homeowners. Let me please break it down in a few simple terms. These are some of the benefits that Mr. Bowman just outlined that I'd like to again state. Approximately $300,000 in matching funds from the state in this year approximately $500,000 in grant funding alone in 2010. Over the life of the program, more than $5 million in state and grant funding, independent of the money that we as residents give this fund. Over 250 acres of newly protected town land. Two new bike walking trails for public use. The Harbor Walk, the Town Maritime Center was a vital investment from CPA. Essential repairs and improvements for historical sites, recreational fields, the basketball course, public tennis court resurfacing, and a number of other projects, all from CPA or help directly through CPA. Voting no on Article 20 and therefore maintaining CPA funding 
will fund future investments in affordable housing, recreational projects, open space acquisition, and historical preservation. One minute. It will improve our bond rating, allowing the town to borrow low interest money for big projects like overhauls to the schools that do need our support and other town facilities. And it will support many other projects that are on our master plan, which the planning board constantly works towards. Please support our town. Please vote no on Article 20. Keep CPA funding for Situate. Thank you. Gentleman at the center mic. Uh, Paul Reedy, 41 Strawberry Lane. It's a tough night to come out here tonight, and I, I, I know it's, uh, I'm just laughing in my head thinking, strange days. Um, who would have thought Norm, of, Norm Paley of all people in town, that even after me being on the Board of Select for six years, would agree to some type of an override? Um, I'd mention that just because I think Norm has, has done uh, a good thing here, no matter what happens in the outcome. And, and I wanted to thank him and uh, Frank DeCesare. They're two people that really know town government. They know how things work. They know where uh, we stand. They know we're in a difficult time. And the only th reason I'm here is to, to, uh, to hopefully shed some light from the, the, the contra argument, um, basically because we're in such a tough economic time. And my hope tonight is, you know, not to create any animosity or controversy. I, I, I've always worked well with the CPA, I thought. I supported it from the onset. Uh, I was the initial liaison for the Board of Selectmen with the Water Study Committee. I worked extensively with Lance and that group for a long, long time. Um, but one of my major concerns is, simultaneously, I was the chairman of financial forecasting. And there are things going on right now that I, I'm really alarmed by. Uh, and I do think that we need to look at the big picture and try and find out how we address the current situation and try to get at the forefront of it so that we don't end up like we did last year at the annual town meeting with certain parents of school kids as well as other people in town saying how did we end up here and why is it so bad and why haven't we taken actions to do things to try and make uh, a difference what 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 i'm very concerned about and i think other people are here is you know you read the town side of the budget that uh, the selectmen and the town administrator were kind enough to provide tonight. And there are things that jump off the page once you've gone through the, the, the process a number of times. And I just would direct your attention to, uh, inside this document, uh, you look at Article 2 and we're taking $276,000 out of free cash uh, to supplement FY10's budget, even though we're in FY11. And you know, if you attend these meetings like uh, they provided last week, Wednesday night, it, it becomes clear that things happen. The state didn't come back with some of the part that they had looked at. And essentially, as, as they alluded to, and correct me if I'm wrong, it was about a 7% reduction uh, in state, uh, the cherry sheet. That, that kind of messed up the numbers, and that's why we're here tonight on Article 2 trying to figure out where to get the 276. One of my concerns from the fi financial forecasting is that if you look in here, and it talks about we have a lot of free cash this year. I guess it's all a matter of how you look at the free cash. I, I brought it up last Wednesday night, and we, we, we're being told that we have $600,000 in free cash. But if you look back to the year before, we only put $9,400 some odd dollars into the stabilization fund. Well, if you go into FY11, the question I asked the other night is, do we really have $600,000 in free cash? And if so, how, what was the contribution that we made to the stabilization fund for FY11? And I was somewhat surprised that I know things are bad, but this is again, trying to be clear of how, how bad things are. In the past years, years in 2002, three, and four, and, and maybe we go back and look at the numbers, we were putting four and $500,000 into the stabilization fund to get us to the 2.1 million that we have now as a rainy day fund. Thinking we have a lot of free cash this year, it may look that way, but if we're only contributing $40,000, you're not necessarily paying that money back into the rainy day fund as you had. Just, that's just a point of concern. That being said, if you look at how we're looking at trying to get the free cash to 5%, we're only going to be at about 4.03, 4.04, 4.05. And again, the concern is the Moody's, et cetera, looking at our ratings and deciding whether or not our borrowing costs are going to go up. I don't want to run out of time, but um, I do think there has to be a middle ground. And my, my major fear here is one minute. Uh, we have but there's fire over time. There are positions that haven't been filled. That's how we made up the budget deficit last year on the town side. 
We lost upwards of 30 somewhat teachers last year, including professional staff and non-professional, and we're going to be facing the same thing come April. It's telling, maybe there's something I can throw out here, whether we, we don't do the rescind, it's been told to me that we've been told we can, we can reduce and find a middle ground to try and make up some type of difference, but the reason why I'm standing up here today is a concerned parent, one of my children's in a class with 31, and the chairman of the school committee, uh, actually Billy Johnson's not anymore, but he stood up the other night and said, if these cuts go through in April, and we don't take some type of plan to go forward, you're looking at 34 plus students per teacher in the classroom, and to me, that's unacceptable. So what I'm leaving tonight with is, there should be discussion tonight so that we don't end up in April wondering how it happened, but perhaps we can have an, an educated, you know, cordial discussion about maybe there would be some necessary actions that need to be taken place, much like, maybe not the way Norm's alluding to it, but maybe you reduce the CPA to 1% for a year or two or three, and if you take the differential and somehow we go to the next step of the process, again, not mixing apples and oranges, but having that money there for a potential override that even Norm's agreed that he'd be willing to go with, there would be on a, if you move the CPA from three to one, there's six hundred and sixty seven thousand dollars that then could be somehow time, please. gone from there. So thank you for your time. Gentleman to my left. Joe Armstrong, thirty one Peggy Beach Road. I support very reluctantly and very sadly uh, the necessity of passing this measure in order to save our children from the absolute necessity of staffing cuts that will come up in next year's budget. Uh, several of us look at the budgets year in advance, I'm one of them, and I'm frankly scared, and I know that significant overrides will be necessary if we do not gain the local control over this million dollars, no matter what the match is. And I have been a past and vocal supporter and congratulate the wonderful efforts, volunteer efforts, all the work, all the effort that's gone into the wonderful projects that have been itemized here but we are all taxed to the brink. Two income households have mostly become one income households. Uh, businesses have cut loose people in this town. I'm one of the businesses who has hired less than I have been able to in the past. I've reached the end of my rope, and what I don't want to do is come back here and hear that we have to skimp on the children of this town in the school budget, which must be a top priority. And it is a choice, with all due respect to the doctor, uh, Mr. Moderator, it is a choice that we're going to have to make. And I don't think this uh, community will bear an override. I think it will fail. We need the million. Uh, and I would also state that the inflexibility of the CPA funds requires X amount percentages. For instance, for affordable housing, since 2002, to my knowledge, the only actual physical unit, affordable housing, that has been constructed is the wonderful effort that the Habitat for Humanity uh, team put together there. We can all applaud their efforts. Otherwise, it's been deposits into the trust fund that have not been used, that have accumulated. And I would like to ask, Mr. Moderator, what the current balance, combined balances is, would be in the housing, affordable housing trust fund and in the a uh, CPA designated portion balance that has continued to accrue and accrue a big pile of money that we can't access. We can't move it over to the schools. We can't move it over. We all know historical preservation is important. These are not normal times. And I, for one, would support in future years when we're over the current economic crisis, reevaluating whether it makes sense to bring it back before. I have been supporting personally with donations and in town the CPA efforts. It is with great reluctance I feel that I see the tide coming and we need to take difficult choices in these days. I would like to ask technically so the people in this town know, what are the current balances that we cannot use for other purposes that are in the Affordable Housing Trust Fund? Both the Trust Fund and the CPA Reserve Balance. I would guess it's over a million dollars. And there's no place to build the housing that I see. The money accrues and accrues and despite the volunteer efforts of wonderful citizens, who seek to, to create affordable housing, to my knowledge, there's been, correct me if I'm wrong, one unit since 2002. And 15 years ago, the citizens of this town, before I was pleased to move to this town, voted a parcel to our housing authority that was donated by a past citizen. Nothing's been put on that parcel to date. What's happened with that? Piece of land owned by the town. Nothing's been done with it for 15 years. And it was designated and voted specifically for affordable housing. These are the inflexibilities that state mandated, state programs, state matching funds have. 
I think we have enough money in those trust funds right now to get us through some tough times and to preserve taxing ability for the future for the children of this town. And it is a choice that we're going to have to face, and that's what it comes up to. We need local control over those monies. And I'd like, before I sit, Mr. Moderator, I'd like a specific answer to that trust fund issue from our uh, town treasurer, if that's possible, through the moderator. How, and, and also a uh, confirmation that only one affordable housing unit has been produced with those monies, despite the great efforts of the people involved. Okay. Uh, time. And Chairman of the Board of Selectmen on the question. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Armstrong. Um, there have been actually purchases. It was $1.5 million to put into the Affordable Housing Trust, of which I am a trustee. Of that, two properties have been purchased. The amount of money that presently is in the trust is about nine hundred and about $90,000. Um, presently, we're also in the process, as you recently know, we transferred at the last um, from the Board of Selectmen earlier in the year, property on Stockbridge. It was approved the last uh, town meeting, um, upon which um, the Habitat for Humanity will be building a building, as well as the Affordable Housing Trust, which is presently putting out RFPs in order to build, in essence, um, a duplex. So presently, there are four buildings that are in queue, of which um, they will be undertaking a uh, lottery. We're in, in the process of putting that together. Um, and probably that will be coming out somewhere in December or January of the new year in order to sell off two of those homes that presently the trust just recently bought. Um, I hope that answers your question. I, I can tell you the trust has not been idle. It's been working very diligently for the past year. And um, you know, welcome all who would like to come to our meetings at the GAR. Thank you. Again, I appreciate those efforts. Thank you, sir. Gentleman to my right. Road. David, uh, could you just start over again? Uh, David Ball, 44, Thanks. Rebecca Road, Thanks. president of the Situate Historical Society. Uh, everybody knows that the town is facing some tough economic times. Um, last year, for example, at uh, the budget process that we went through with the Board of Selectmen, the Advisory Committee, etc., uh, we presented what we considered to be a very conservative uh, request for, if I remember correctly, about twenty-five, twenty-six thousand dollars to help maintain the six town-owned historical buildings. That amount was cut to eight thousand dollars, or in that range, and that only paid for the utilities and the alarm systems at the six buildings that the town owns. I think everybody in this room is well aware that you cannot maintain uh, a property by simply doing very minimal work and paying utility bills. Everybody that's a homeowner in this hall knows that paying the light bill and the gas bill and the oil bill is not going to maintain the property. But at least we had the solace in knowing that if something major happened to a particular property, that there was a way to fund some of the repairs. The other thing that I, I, I found very interesting when I was looking through the 1930 town report the other day, uh, there were two reports that drew my attention. One was the report from the Board of Selectmen, and the other was the report from the Park Commissioners. The Board of Selectmen recognized that they were entering into a very scary economic time. Obviously, it was worse already than what we face today. They mentioned the Depression, but they also said they recognized the importance of maintaining the public buildings and the public appearance of the town, and therefore they needed to do everything possible as best they could in the coming years to make sure that they maintained to the best of their ability the, what those things were that the town owned. I'm just going to read you a very short excerpt from the Park Commissioner. It's their opening statement. Believing that a town is partly judged by its public buildings and grounds, we immediately started to repair the lighthouse, which was very much in need of repair. Then they went on to discuss the repairs that they also undertook at Watson Tower, the public, the public parks around town, the playgrounds, the sidewalks, etc. We're kind of faced that same situation here. So I would urge you to vote no on this article. Thank you.
Gentleman to my left. Peter Kelly, Detweiler, 114 Tilden Road. Um, can I get from the town officials clarity on two points? One, that the money cannot be transferred from the CPA funds to anything else. And two, that if investments in the school required additional investments, that would require a special override, because I think there's still some confusion among some people in the general public on those two points. I'll answer the first question. CPA money can only be used for the purposes set out by the statute. Uh, and expenditure for operating expenses or for the school uh, would not be possible. As for the second question, I'll defer to whatever, to whichever official feels they can answer. Mr. Vignani. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, that is correct. Um, there, the only way to get the funds into the school budget would be to pass an override um, at the annual town meeting. So even if this is voted down this evening, there's no guarantee that those monies are going to go anywhere um, to the school budget or to the town budget. They're two completely separate actions. Thank you. I would like to thank uh, Mr. Paley for bringing this issue up. I think it's important that we continually examine where we spend our monies. It's important to do that each and every day as informed citizens in the town. I also think if you look at this thing longer term from an economic perspective, there are a number of issues which, which state in favor of maintaining the CPA and voting against Article 20. One of them is the water supply. If you look at a place like the city of New York, they invested significant monies upstate in the Catskills to avoid a billion dollar investment in water treatment. It was a lot cheaper for them to invest in open space far away from the city to do that. We have the opportunity to invest in open space right here in town that we can take advantage of for recreational purposes that also protects our water supply. We also have one of the most beautiful places on the South Shore. I I've have the unfortunate burden of traveling a lot. And when I do travel, people ask where I'm from, and I tell them Situ. And it turns out a lot of people have been to the Irish Riviera at one time or another. And they always remark on what a beautiful town this is. Imagine if this town had Lawson Tower with the shingles falling off and the mossing shed defunct, and we didn't have the bike trails, and we had developments all over town in places that have been protected. Imagine what that town would look like. Yes, we are in difficult times right now, and it's important time for us to re-examine our priorities and stay in favor of the things we have committed to for the last five or ten years. It's the quality and the character of this town that is worth preserving that we'll pass on to our kids and the generations beyond them that make me strongly in favor of voting against uh, Mr. Paley's recommendation in Article 20. Thank you. Lady to my right. Barbara Leiden, wow, 65 Hollett Street, sorry. Uh, many of the points I was planning to address have already been addressed, thankfully, because for everyone who knows me, I am not short-winded. Um, I would like to say that I've had lengthy discussions with Frank de Cesare. I've tried to have discussions with Mr. Paley about this particular topic. I have a lot of respect for Frank and his idea. It was a great idea for a, for a moment to lower the tax base, to then pass an override for the same amount. But the two things don't marry up, and they particularly don't marry up in this particular time, in this particular town. There is no correlation other than tax savings for one area for something entirely different when both are of equal importance to our town. I can't stress that enough. The quality of our schools, for those that know me and so many other faces that I see in this room, who have worked for Yes for Situate, worked for so many school functions, are so important. But so are the quality of the things that we have in this town. And there's folks on this planning board who have great plans for an economic development committee that CPC funds are the only source of funds that we have for those plans. So I encourage folks to stay on track with what those economic development plans are, to attend meetings, to pay attention, because if you go on the town website and you look at the master plan, the majority of things in that economic development section are things that can be done with these funds. And there are no other funds to do these things. So the number one thing that this town needs right now is another source of revenue not just our tax base, but another source of revenue. 
And those are the things that Dan Monger and others that are working on this Economic Development Committee are working on. So I really want to stress that point. I also want to stress that at this point, folks, and I've asked these questions, there is not someone raising their hand excited about running an override. There is, the phone rings at my house, and I'm sure it rings at a number of your other houses, saying, hey, you going to jump back on board? You're going to run it? No, because people want to see another form of revenue. And they also want to see union negotiations, and it's not a happy topic, but it's one that should be brought up. By no fault of any person in this room, the unions have a lot of strength. And if we have money in our account, I hate to say it, but those negotiations are weakened. And as much as I love those teachers, and I do, every single one that helps my children every day. One minute. I don't want to see funds raised and all go to one source that doesn't end up helping our children learn any better because we still have the same number of teachers. So I strongly encourage you not to support this article and to be forward thinking and support economic development in situate. For those of you at the microphones, if you wonder the order that I'm trying to recognize you, I, I am trying to guesstimate when you got to the mic rather than just going that way. So uh, our next two speakers will come from the right, gentleman to my right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. <clears throat> I'm Bruce Waite um, from 720 Country Way. I'm speaking uh, tonight as a resident and the chairman of the Recreation Commission. Uh, the Recreation Commission has been working with the Community Preservation Commission and the CPA funds for a long time. And what we've done has really been phenomenal. And we as a commission just want to remind all of you of these phenomenal projects. Since 19... 99 up to 2003 and beyond, these projects are the Hatherley School Playground, the Cushing School Playground, the Community Basketball Courts out behind the high school, the Rail with Trail, the Bike and Walking Pass, especially the Maxwell Trust projects in the West End, the Driftway Coastal Access Plan, the Marine Park Landscaping, the library grounds and landscaping, Egypt Park, the Ryan Flannery Field at the Hatherley School, the tennis courts at the Gates School, the Driftway North River Public Access, the restoration to the Mass Humane Boathouse that now houses, uh, houses the town recreation sailing program, the newly approved Harbor Walk, and the proposed girls softball field. Ladies and gentlemen, this is 15 phenomenal projects that we have done with the CPC. So what we would like to do is say that this has just supported us the opportunity to not only pass this down to you, but for generations to come. So we as the Recreation Commission are in, in um, unanimous consent against Article 20. Thank you. Lady to my right. Nancy Murray Young, 161 Captain Pierce Road. I defer my comments to the eloquence of the previous speakers and request that we move the question. Well, Nancy, you put me in a tough spot because um, there are a few people who still want to speak. Uh, it is the moderator's call as to whether it's appropriate to accept a motion uh, to terminate debate. I see Mr. Hayes still standing. I see Ms. Burbine lurking around the microphone over there. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, we'll try a couple of more speakers and then we'll get to the question. Gentleman to my left. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Michael Hayes, 50 Beaver Dam Road. Uh, w one thing that's been uh, forgotten about uh, with the list of, of all the fine things that the, the CPC has done is the uh, artificial football field at the 
high school with, was accomplished with a portion of CPC money. Uh, and the schools have been uh, a big beneficiary of those. And eliminating CPC is a mistake. It's not prudent. However, uh, I agree with uh, Mr. Reedy uh, that in times like this, uh, we need to start thinking and talking about things. Accordingly, I would like to make a motion that the uh, article be amended to reduce the 3% surcharge uh, in Chapter 44 or, uh, of the CPA uh, from 3% to 1%. been moved. Is there a second? Yes. And there is now an amendment to the motion on the floor. And if you wish to speak, unless you're asking for the runner to bring you a microphone, go to a mic. Let me just address a procedural question before I turn to Mr. Hayes. Uh, Mr. Hayes has made an amendment which is in order. I have been asked to rule whether uh, uh, a reduction in the rate, re reduction in the tax rather than the elimination of the tax uh, would be within the scope of the article. Uh, and uh, I determined that that motion would be in order. Uh, further, Ms. Uh, Nancy Murray Young offered a motion to move the question. I must admit, after a little bit of a speech, so I'm a little bit torn on that one, uh, what I'm going to propose that we do is we'll go forward on Mr. Hayes's motion. We'll have some debate on that. Uh, and then if you want to move, if you want to vote uh, favorably on Mr. Hayes's motion, you may do so. If you voted down, I think at that point that we would be ready to move to the question uh, on Mr. Paley's motion as unamended. So, uh, Mr. Hayes, sorry to interrupt your time. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you. Again, I am a strong supporter of the CPC. However, uh, I am also uh, a strong supporter of the, the school children in the Citroën Public Schools. I, I think, uh, in my opinion, that the need to start the discussion of how we are going to solve the long-term problems of the Citroën Public Schools, and that needs to start now. The school committee has been meeting since May knowing the, the budget deficit that is lurking for fiscal year 2012. We've been meeting since July every other week with the, the selectmen and the town administrator uh, going over the budgets uh, of the towns and the revenue sources and uh, our estimate is that the uh, budget deficit for the school department uh, for fiscal year 12 is uh, anywhere from a million two to a million six. Uh, that would, if that were to come about, uh, that would be the third consecutive year of major budget disaster, third consecutive year of, of layoffs. And I must tell you all that uh, if the school department is forced to sustain those types of cuts for the third years in a row, the Citroën Public Schools will take that step off the cliff and uh, we will be dismantling the Citroën Public Schools. That being the case, I think it's reasonable to discuss and I think uh, the, to discuss reducing the CPC until such time as the economy imp improves. It still would require a town meeting, excuse me, a town election. It would still require a town meeting approval for any type of an override, uh, and then a town election on the override. So this would merely be the first step. Uh, the school committee has been begging people to come to our meetings, to, to listen to the facts and see where our school system has been for three years and where it's, it's going. Uh, One we, we had a meeting last week, 50 people showed up, 20 of them were town hall employees. Uh, last year we met uh, anybody that would talk to us and uh, people get to town meeting and, and, and look at the school uh, department and, and look at the layoffs that we're faced and they go, huh, they don't understand it. I would like everybody that's here tonight, the school committee meets. Uh, every other Monday, starting next week, if we could have half the people that are here 
saying they're concerned about the school system to show up at our meetings, show up at our budget presentations, it would only benefit the town. But I think if this, article, if this amendment is passed, the discussion will continue. Thank you. Lady to my left. Ann Burbine, 10 Pennycrest Road. Yeah. I think that really we're at a crossroads here. As far as I am concerned, when you have the school budget versus CPA, you really have apples and oranges. One thing, in my opinion, has nothing to do with the other. I would v urge you to vote against this amendment because it will mean a decrease, obviously, in what we put forward in terms of what's coming out of our pockets and defeat the article on its face. The $120 that I pay every year will go back into my pocket. Whether an override is due, whether unions can be dealt with, that's something that's down the road. It is the economy. Yes, it is. We have lived through some very difficult times, whether it was the, the fuel embargo back in, in 73, whether it was Proposition 2 and a half, many, many different things. But CPA has been a true gift to this town. It is a small price to pay to have the things that we wouldn't otherwise have. To vote this amendment down and to vote the Norm Paley's article down is in the best interests of this town and the legacy of this town. It's who we are as people. It's a community. It's about all of us. Yes, the schools play a role, but we have to look at other means, whether it's economic development, who is to say? But please, please, please vote both the amendment and vote the article down. This is in our best interest, because if we do not vote this down, believe me when I tell you, it will never, ever come back. It will be gone, and it will be done. Whether the economy improve, improves or otherwise, it will never, ever come back. It will be done. Gentlemen at the center, Mike. Uh, Paul Reedy, 41 Strawberry Lane. I understand I'm down to three minutes this go around, so I'll be as quick as I possibly can. Um, I do oh, just. Mr. Reedy, you reminded me of a rule that I've forgotten. Because you've already spoken on this article, I can't recognize you until I've recognized everyone else who hasn't spoken yet. My apologies. I, I am sorry. Uh, lady to my right. If you see anybody else who tries that, let me know. Mary Jenkins, 22 Sunset Road. Um, I have some logistical questions about the current amendment to the article. If we vote to only drop the CPC to 1% versus turning the whole amendment down or the article down, and do we not, in effect, lose the state funding, which is what, and, and what the, that amount means to the town? But it was my understanding when we voted it in that we would lose it if we didn't have a 3% CPC article in town, in place, and it is the one area that the state has not cut funding for. Maybe it's the democratic government we run, but they believe in conservation and preservation, and that is the one area that they haven't cut funding for. It's the one area that we actually get funds from the federal government that haven't been, or from the state government that haven't been cut yet. So I, m those are my questions. Do we still get the state funding and how does that apply? To answer the question, Mr. Bowman from the CPC. Hold on, John. Mike? Hello. Okay. Go ahead. Here it goes. Um, Situate's currently a 3% CPC community, so when you have a 3% surcharge, we also participate in a second and third equity rounds where, where discretionary additional funding is granted only to 3% communities. So historically, Situate sh 
received an extra two to five percent a year that translates somewhere between thirty and fifty thousand dollars a year extra we get because we stay at three percent if we move it all below three percent we lose that equity round distribution we still get a state match but the state match is only the first round match we lose all the second and third equity round. So, so we do lose some of the state match, we don't lose it in its entirety. What, what do those numbers actually equal out to roughly? Can you give us some figures on those? 3% versus 1%? Well, well currently at 3% the surcharge in situate is about a million dollars. If we move it down to 1% uh, it'll be about 330,000. The state matching funds will decline to something somewhere between about $100,000 um, or less. So effectively what it'll do is it, it greatly decreases our ability to do any kind of open space acquisition or, or quite honestly fight anything that might be developed into a 40B. Okay, uh, Ms. hold on. One Questions come through the moderator. It's not a back and forth. Uh, I'm gonna recognize Mr. Paley briefly because he has, uh, I believe, a set of numbers he wanted to yeah. give to um, you. One percent would return to the taxpayer $667,000. That would be the money available that they, we could put towards an override. That's, that's 1%. No, that's not what I was asking. Okay, but fine. If, if you want to know how much then would be left with CPC, just subtract 1 million from 667. All right, uh, thank you, Mr. Paley. Uh, lady on my right, you have two minutes. Um, I guess I need clarification. So basically, currently right now, we get a million dollars from the state because of the amount no. that... Okay, hold on. Hold I'm not, on. I'm, uh, are you making a statement or asking a question? And Mr. I'm asking Bailey, a question of the person who was over here at the mic on this side who was having the numbers regarding the money that matches from okay. the state, not to do with anything of where the funds go. All right. what I'm, I'm going looking to add, at what, matching state excuse funds me. here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to lay all your questions out right now, and then I'm going to ask the chairman of the CPC to answer your questions. Go ahead. If you could be, please be clear to the meeting here what exactly we get from the state by even having the CPC, by having it at 1%, and by keeping it at 3% as it stands right now, and what we would lose. If you can come up with some rough numbers on that, I think that would help. Mr. Bowman, solely to answer the questions. Uh, I'll try, Mr. Moderator. Um, the current surcharge, and, and I'm basing this on last year's surcharge because I don't have this year's numbers. The surcharge was approximately a million dollars. That's the money situate raises. The state match was approximately 30%, a little below last year. So it was about $300,000. In addition, we received a $500,000 grant this year for those projects. So last year, from the state, we received a 30% match and a $500,000 grant on a million dollar surcharge. If we go back to 1%, as I said, I believe the surcharge would roughly be one third or $330,000. The state match, I would expect, would be in that same $100,000 range and we would lose any equity round match that would be, it, it's, it's roughly gonna be between two and 5% of the surcharge. So if we only have a $300,000 surcharge we, we've lost 700,000 at a two to five percent match, so somewhere in the $35,000 range in the equity round. I hope that makes sense. Lady to my right. Nancy Toppin, 26 Clap Road. I would like to move the motion on the amendment only. All right, there's been a motion to move the question on the amendment. To terminate debate requires a two thirds vote, it is not debatable. All those in favor of moving the question on the amendment only signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? No. Uh, so voted and declared a two-thirds vote. We now come to the question on the amendment, which is to reduce the surcharge from 3% to 1%. Everybody clear on that? All right. All those in favor of Mr. Hayes's amendment to reduce the surcharge from the current 3% to 1% signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? No. The amendment is defeated. We now move to the main question. I had promised Ms. 
Nancy Murray Young that we would move to the main question after discussion of the amendment. Um, are we ready for the vote? You can say yes. yes. Anybody opposed to voting it now? Okay, let's take a vote. All those in favor of Mr. Paley's motion to revoke sections 3 to 7, inclusive of chapter 44B of the general laws, also known as the Community Preservation Fund, effective July 1, 2011, as approved by its legislative body, signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? No. Uh, so voted and declared defeated. Did I hear a motion for reconsideration from one of those people running out the door? We'll go right to Article 21. As you can tell from my sarcastic tone, I don't like uh, the vote and run approach to town meeting. Article 21, uh, on the motion, Mr. Paley. Uh, state your uh, point George of George B. Kelly, 450 Country Way, Situate. Sir. A resolution. I would like to offer a resolution in memory of George Beas. In the high school, they are, as I understand, erecting or creating a new television studio. George Beas worked very hard for the musical era of our town. He worked very hard as a postal carrier. He worked super hard for the TV programs that were put on. And in memory of him, I would like to propose that the new proposed TV studio at this high school, it should be named in memory of George Beers. I'd like to have a show of hands, Mr. Moderator, if that's what is necessary to show that the town remembers the late George Beers. With uh, a great deal of pleasure, I accept your motion. I would ask uh, for a vote from the meeting on Mr. Kelly's proposed resolution. All those in favor of honoring Mr. Burse in the fashion Mr. Kelly has suggested signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, so voted and declared Thank unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Article 21, Mr. Paley. Uh, move, move, hello. Uh, move to accept Chapter 60, Section 3C, City or Town Scholarship Fund Depository Distribution, as uh, stated below. Is there a second? To move and second it, discussion, Mr. Paley. Uh, adopting this fund would allow the town to set up three funds. The three funds would be for an educational aid to deserving city and town residents as a scholarship fund, and to establish a city or town education fund, the purpose of which shall be to provide supplemental education funding for local education needs, or to provide funding for existing adult literacy programs. What this would allow us to do, and this is plan B, is if we do need an override for the schools, and it fails, then the question is, what do we do? If we have a fund set up, what would happen is you would see on your tax bill a place where you can check a box and fill an amount either for a scholarship fund or for any educational needs of the school system or to provide an adult literacy program. This would be tax deductible to you. It would be purely voluntary. You need not check the box. You need not fill in an amount. 
but if you care about the schools and want to provide the money that that override may not be available to provide, or additional money on top of the override, then you would be able to do it. And the school system would be able to use that money any way they wanted to use it, with no restrictions. From the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Vignat. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, the Board of Selectmen unanimously support this, this uh, motion. We think this is a great idea. Again, as Norm stated, on your tax bill, there have been an opportunity for everybody to individually make a donation to the school, and it will go directly to the school budget. I don't think we believe that this is going to um, handle all of the school problems that they have, but it is a, a step in the right direction. Um, as Mr. Hayes mentioned earlier, there will be future discussions about an override. We do hope that you come out and listen to them and participate. Again, the selectmen unanimously support um, this motion. The, uh, Madam Clerk doubts uh, whether I asked for a second. I think I did, but is there a second? Okay, there we go. Keeps me honest. Uh, from the uh, Chairman of the Advisory Committee, Mr. DiLorenzo. Um, in your handout, you'd see how the uh, funds would be collected and, and how they would be used, um, and as importantly, how they would be managed, and it would be a uh, scholarship committee, an educational fund committee that would consist of the superintendent of schools, and no fewer than four residents of the town as, supported by the, as supported by, appointed by the Board of Selectmen. Um, and the advisory committee was unanimous in support of this motion. Further discussion? There being none, this requires a majority vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, so voted and declared unanimous. Before I accept the motion to adjourn, I want to thank you all for coming out and providing such an interesting debate uh, to the sponsors. Uh, thank Madam Clerk, the checkers, and the tellers. I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So moved, seconded, seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed, this meeting is adjourned.